Just recently, attention was drawn to Syngenta boss Eric Fierwald after his remarks that went viral. Both local and international media sought to get time with him to interview him based on his latest speech that stirred controversy. In this video, we'll evaluate Eric's comments and weigh in to figure out whether he was right, how the news was received, and what critics have to say concerning his remarks. Be with me to the end as we address this crisis within another. To start with, we wish to draw your attention to Syngenta. All eyes have been drawn to it. All agricultural news and all critics are up in arms against it. Is Syngenta trying to market its products by calling for an end to organic farming? We sought to evaluate Syngenta's history and have a broader look at its controversial boss and the way business is conducted at Syngenta. This is just a precursor of where we're headed. We will, in the final stages, discuss Eric's opinions and whether he was right. But first, who is this person? And what is this company? Are they after something? Syngenta is a seeds company all over the world with branches in several countries. It's interested in the safety of the plant from the time it's just a seed to when it's fully grown. It's the world's leading crop protector, helping farmers all over counter threats and putting food on the table affordably while minimizing the use of land and other agricultural inputs using inorganic farming techniques. In June 2016, Eric was hired as the new Syngenta boss and chief executive officer. He's been in the past a CEO at Univar, a leading chemical and other related products distributor. He's a graduate of the University of Delaware with a Bachelor of Science degree in mechanical engineering, a man with a well of knowledge, reputable with innate leadership and management credentials, and exemplary to the society. On the 8th of May 2022, Eric uttered the statements spiraling a series of responses from close associates, the media, and those who pulled in to defend the organic sector and to thwart his remarks. Why did he make such remarks? Is organic farming really detrimental to the future of food security? Can it be measured as inorganic farming? And what were the responses to his utterances? We are just getting started. There is more to Eric statement than meets the eye. Whether he was right or wrong, whether the message was well received or not, it was already passed and cannot be retracted. I believe he himself would not withdraw that. He meant what he said, and as pundits, we're here to discuss, evaluate the possibility of doing away with organic farming, weigh the effects, positive and negative, and make conclusions. Partner with us in this discussion, leave your comments, and like and follow this page. Shall we? What is organic farming, and what are its influences on food production? Does it have positive or negative impacts? Is it promising to farmers and to food security. Are you a farmer? Do you use most of these homemade products? Then if you do, you're into organic farming. It is the simplest term that involves the use of biologically available manure, pesticides, and seeds for farming, such that the fertilizer is homemade, obtained from the waste derived from animals, and manure, while pesticides are made from herbal trees. On the other end, inorganic farming is the use of biologically modified and commercial products, milled and refined scientifically for farming. In organic farming, food isn't grown with synthetic fertilizer, nor are the seeds taken through production in industries. Everything is done traditionally. Eric feels that this traditional way of doing things puts food security hanging in the balance. Are his sentiments true? Before we reach our verdict, then maybe we should delve in and learn one, two, or more things concerning organic farming and inorganic farming. Now let's talk about organic farming. Since long ago, all farmers practiced organic farming. It is until modernity came, with more specialized ways of doing things that people started shifting. Organic farming is more of substance than cash. It's practiced on small parcels of land using traditional farming methods. Seeds are preserved manually. No additional chemicals are involved and the fertilizer used in all stages is organic. That is, it's derived from animal manure and other compost dirt. What are the merits and demerits of organic farming? Well, below are the highlights. Merits. Reduces soil erosion. Uses fewer pesticides. Aids to recycling animal waste back to the farm is cost-effective, provides a friendlier working environment for farmers, demerits, low yields, is tedious and tiring, so sensitive to economic decline, can't benefit from synthetic organic chemicals, labor-intensive, organic farm products are so expensive. So how about inorganic farming? Inorganic farming is a more improved version of organic farming. It's modernized with sophisticated farming equipment and fertilizers with higher yields. Eric feels that organic farming should be dropped in favor of it and that farms can be utilized fully in this way. He seems to be marketing inorganic farming, since that is what Syngenta is deeply engrossed in. However, so many questions arose from what he just said. Some went wild, some backed him, and we were asking endless questions. Eric should have been as far as to openly address these challenges. What is left after his remarks are opinions and debates. Is organic way better than organic farming? If yes, then how? And what are the negative effects it yields? We're not going to back up Eric's wishes before we're fully furnished with enough data to back our 
support for him. It would be better if we sat on the fence than follow his chorus and call for an end to organic farming, minus pondering more on the issue, or deny his wish and deem it invalid without assessing what it could have in store for the generations to come. Is inorganic farming king? Is it worth the investment? Inorganic farming entails the use of man-made products in farming, from machines, pesticides, seeds, fertilizer, hormones, soil, and antibiotics, to many other chemicals. There's a wide feeling, and perhaps that's what motivates Syngenta's CEO, that inorganic farming is more valuable and productive than organic farming. The comparison of its advantages over those of organic puts it at the forefront of defense by various, several farmers and organizations. What are the advantages of inorganic farming? The advantages of inorganic farming include, and are not limited to, 1. Inorganic fertilizers, unlike organic ones, act immediately. They do not need to decompose to be able to function. They react in a matter of days. 2. Organic fertilizers provide a rapid dose of nutrients. 3. High yields. 4. Due to mechanization, it's less tiring and time effective. 5. Can be practiced on large pieces of land. Inorganic farming seems to be way better compared to organic farming. But is there a need for organic farming to be done away with? Could that even be possible? What would be the reaction? Should we brace for a change in the coming days? Does organic farming have a hand in the current food crisis? Truth be told, there is a massive food crisis world over. People are reeking of hunger and poverty. Subsistence products can't be enough for homes. People are dying out of hunger, and it seems Eric is directing the blame to organic farming. It would be hard for us to tell from a neutral ground if really organic farming is causing all the pain. Should we or should we not take sides? You say we should? Eric might have been right, but we cannot underscore the fact that organic farming puts food on the table for billions of families worldwide. So if they should stop organic farming and embrace inorganic farming, then that might take another hundred years for adaptation. Furthermore, the cost of organic farming is lower. Inorganic farming is more costly, and farming tools are so expensive, and so are fertilizers, pesticides, and other tools to be used. With the current economic position, it would be equated to going through a pinhole to eradicate organic farming. Come to think of it, that's never going to happen, and Eric should come to listen to this. If it should, then that is not today, neither tomorrow, nor in a hundred years to come. Organic farming is still valued and shall forever be valued. It's true that the product might be low, but at least it's affordable. I challenge Eric to a poll. I'll give him nothing if he wins. But as sure as I am, you can't stop organic farming and expect to eradicate the food problem. Organic farming should be the stepping stone. It's the majority and what should be empowered. If I had a gun pointed at my head, I wouldn't change my course. Eradicating organic farming won't, will never help the food crisis. Investing in it and sponsoring it shall. Finally, let's talk about the food crisis. Eric is right. There's a ravaging food crisis that needs to be tackled, especially in third world countries. People are languishing in abject poverty, food insecurity, and drought, and there's little help walking their way. If Eric's idea can help, then so be it. But we all need to assess the potential within it, whether it's even possible. In the meantime, as we struggle with Eric's remarks, we must focus on ending the food crisis. That's all for today.